everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. We honor the Lord for his presence. Amen. For the opportunity to be found in the house of the Lord on the Lord's day. Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice. Hallelujah. And Amen. Amen. Be joyful. Be happy. It's a choice. Yes, it is. It is a choice yes, it is. we make. I don't believe that there's one of us in here today couldn't find a reason. Huh? Mm, mine. Amen. Amen. To be a little down, a little disappointed, a little sad about something. Amen. But I choose to push all of that aside today. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For some people, joy is the needle in the haystack. <laughs> amen. Amen. But for me, amen, joy is the needle in the needle stack. <laughs> amen. All I got to do is just grab one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, of Jesus Hallelujah. and all that he has done for me. If I could open my mouth and say a word, my soul, hallelujah, hallelujah amen, would bubble up in me. And a hallelujah would come out. If it didn't come out of my mouth, you would see it in my eyes. Hallelujah. You would say, he's saying hallelujah. You would see it in my hands. If I couldn't say a word, hallelujah. I'd just raise amen. my hand. God's been good. God's been good. Hallelujah. Amen. And because of it, we're going to stand and rejoice. And we're going to worship him in his house this morning. Come on, praise team. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. It's prayer time. It is prayer time in the house. Amen. Jesus encouraged his disciples that men ought to always pray and not faint. Amen. News flash. If you're not praying, you're fainting. Amen. If you're not praying, 
fainting. You're fainting. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There are those that have realized that we know how to pray over here at Refuge. And they called uh, somebody's number and said, put me on your prayer list. Hallelujah. You know, there are prayer lists all over the country. That's right. Thank and there ain't one that I would say take my name off of. That's right. Amen. But you know what? I want mine on this prayer list. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray this morning for the Richardson family. We thank the, amen, the uh, Refuge Church family for helping us, amen, serve this family on this past week. Amen. amen. And the loss of their father and husband. Pray for Mother Celestine Peter. She had surgery, amen, I believe on Saturday morning, amen. Saturday morning, Donald Gallup Jr., Howard Lynch, we went to visit him amen. week before last, amen. amen. We had a lovely visit with him, lovely amen. visit with amen. him. Amen, you know, he's, 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 he looked like he wasting away in his body, but his spirit, man, my God. I, I've never seen somebody in, amen, the condition he's in Thank you. with the spirit that he mm. showed, amen. 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 And if you get a chance, visit with him. I want the brethren to go back with me, amen, to visit him in the very near future. Pray for Sister Rivetta. She's here with us this morning. Amen. For Chandrea, amen. for, amen, Kashmir Gibson, Maurice Bruce, Glenn Bond, Kevin Dunn, amen, uh, Pastor Chris Mallory, Rudolph Williams, Ruth Russell, Clarence Hunt, Jerome Davis, Johnny Hunt, Carolyn Marks, Pastor Bass Knight, Reverend Gloria Moore, Dominique Forbes, amen, amen. Mm. Amen. Francis Stamp here for the victims that continue to pile up and add up on a, not a weekly basis, on a daily basis in our country. Amen. Through this academic, epidemic of gun violence that has ripped our land. Children, children. Put getting their hands up. They're not the victim of gun violence. Now they're becoming the perpetrators of it. You know the devil is a lie. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. Church, we need to pray. We need to pray this demon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah out of here. Amen. Amen. For those that are suffering in the Amen. The uh, storms and floods in California. Amen. And 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 the Nevadas. And Amen. It's amazing to watch this earth as it moan and groans for the return of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And if the earth groaning, what about us? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of God's creation ought to be saying, even so, come Lord Jesus. Pray for our nation with its, amen, cornucopia. Amen. amen, of issues that's, amen, confronting us today, political, social, economic, amen. health, hallelujah. Amen. Pray for our, if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and, amen, turn from their wicked ways, he promised that he would heal our land. Pray for our nation, for the nation of Ukraine, for our community locally, and pray for the peace of Israel. Remember our seniors, Mother Mamie Martin and Mother Margaret Nicholson. Elder Whitley is in the nursing home as far, amen, as we've been informed here in Warrington, I believe. Pray for him and for Mother Whitley. Amen, amen that as they age, God will give them strength Keep them. Pray for Mother Richardson again. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. She's got uh, a road to travel now. Unfamiliar road. You don't stay married to somebody that long and they leave. Amen. It's like somebody has ripped a part of her away. 
Amen. Pray for her. Pray for her peace and for her solace that the Lord will comfort her. Pray for Minister Stalin and Mother Sarah. And amen. Pray that the Lord will keep us refuge, Christ-centered, family-focused, and conscious of what our community needs from us. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come. God, we come boldly. God, we come boldly, but we still come humbly. God, we come because no other help we know. If you would withdraw your hand from us, hallelujah. Ah, God, whether would we go? So we come, we come. We come to thee today, hallelujah. Just as I am, but with one plea, hallelujah. That, that thy blood was shed for me, hallelujah. God, we come, we come to you hallelujah. today. And God, we come some with burdens and hallelujah. with cares, hallelujah. God, we come with our issues and our faults, hallelujah. our flaws, hallelujah. hallelujah. But most of all, God, we come to you with our hope. Ah, God, our hope rely upon you today. Ah, God, we depend on you. God, we, we trust in you. Ah, God, we need you this morning, hallelujah. Ah, God, we ask you to allow your anointing to rest on us today. Like the dew in the morning, oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Mm. Rest upon our hearts today. Yes, God. Uh, God, fall gently upon us today, hallelujah. Mm. Uh, God, and speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, hallelujah. Minister, God, hallelujah. to our spirits yes, this morning, hallelujah. Uh, God, for we come to you in a place of need today. Mm. God, some of us may need one thing and some of us another but we all have a need today and you declare that you supply all of our need according to your riches in glory whatever it is if it's healing heal Lord hallelujah if it's deliverance God break the chains and the, ah, the doors of our bondage hallelujah God, break them asunder this morning. Hallelujah. Speak liberty to them that are bound. Set the captive free this morning. Free, free, free. Hallelujah. For he whom the Son set free is free indeed. If there's finances, God, the gold is yours. The silver is yours. The cattle upon a thousand hills. The earth is the Lord. Hallelujah. And they that dwell therein. Ah, God, send us, hallelujah, from unexpected, from unfamiliar places. Send us a blessing that can only be delivered by your hand, by your hand, by your hand. Hallelujah. Uh, God, we ask you, God, now to just go into our families and, and our home. God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, God, walk through our family tree, every branch, every child, the fruit of every womb and of every loin. God, we pray for our children this morning. For children are heritage of the Lord. Hallelujah. God, you, they are what you have given us. Hallelujah. To bless you and to glorify you in their living. We pray and we bind the hand of the enemy whose will is to destroy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, to decelerate, hallelujah. Incinerate our children, God, in the name of Jesus. We bind the hand of the enemy. God, we speak freedom, we speak liberty, we speak peace, we speak prosperity. In the name of Jesus, upon our children and God bless us to be the conduit through which your blessings flow in our communities on our jobs hallelujah 
Our God in hallelujah. God in our relationships. Use us. God to bless you. And to bless those. That you have sent us to. Now bless this service this morning. Bless the man of God as he comes to speak out of your word. God let him down in the depths of your word. And give us what we need today. And we'll give your name the glory. The honor and the praise. We ask all these blessings. In Jesus name. And everybody, everybody said amen. amen. All to thee. the white flag this morning hallelujah Jesus. I give up I give in hallelujah I'm giving out God huh? God there is no more resistance to your will in my life hallelujah I surrender all mind body spirit hallelujah I surrender it I freely give it to you today now, God, do what you will with it. Ah, God, use it to your glory. Glory, hallelujah. Use it, use it, use it. Use me, Lord, hallelujah, until you use me up, hallelujah. Everything I am, everything I'm not, everything I got, hallelujah. I give it to you this morning, and I bless you. Our scripture reading this morning shall come from Psalms chapter number one. And we shall read it responsibly in its entirety. One through six, and we will read the sixth verse together. Psalms chapter one, beginning with verse one, and it reads as follows blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Let us read the sixth verse together. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Hallelujah. Ah, boy, we thank God for that scripture this morning. It's just short, but just sweet as it can be. Hey, man, hey, man, I don't know about you, but I want to be that blessed man today. That's why I watch where I walk, huh? I watch where I sit. Hallelujah. I'm careful where I stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because your proximity, uh, hallelujah, what you are close to determines, amen, how God sees you. Birds of a flat feather. They flock together. Amen. So I'm careful. I, I, I'm, I'm careful. Amen. That I stand where God can see that I am different. This time, amen, we're going to have 
Our announcements come from our First Lady, amen, uh, Sister Sharon S. Martin. Receive her with a hearty amen. 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 Beginning on Wednesday, April the 5th through Friday, April 7th, we will be in revival. Minister Lamone Hodge of the Eastern Star Holiness Church in Raleigh, North Carolina, will be our guest evangelist. And that service time will begin nightly at 7 p.m. The North Carolina Metropolitan Diocese meeting will be held April 14th and 15th at the Hampton Inn in Kinston, North Carolina. And the hotel location and telephone numbers are all included in our program today. District Elder Clifton Daniels and the Straightway Church of Christ in Aden is the host. Happy birthday to Sister Mary Williams, amen. Today is her birthday, March the 12th. We praise the Lord for Sister Williams being with us on today. Uh, God has blessed her to see another year, another birthday, and we praise him that you have come and decided to come to worship service today, and we're gonna pray with you and worship the Lord with you in the beauty of holiness, amen. And we're gonna hear a word from the Lord on today. We wish you a happy birthday. And at the end of the service today, saints here at Refuge, we got a little special something for you. Amen. In the way of a song. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Lord. I thought for the day. A merry heart does good like a medicine. Amen. Joyful, joyful, joyful. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Service back into the hands of our pastor, shepherd of this flock, District Elder Fred Martin, Jr. Amen. We thank uh, Lady Sharon for those announcements. We ask you to govern yourselves accordingly. We w next Sunday, we will be going to the Glory Church of Jesus in Enfield. In Enfield, amen. On next Sunday at 3, we ask as many of you as can, amen, to go with us as we go uh, to help them with their Men's Day Brotherhood service. Amen. Minister Deacon Leon Richardson is the sponsor. Amen. And surely I, I, I always look forward to going. Amen. Supporting Deacon Leon because, amen, he never forgets us. And we never forget him. Amen. And so we're going and we're going to encourage not only Deacon Leon, but all the brothers at the Glory Church of Jesus on next Sunday. Let us stand and get our gifts, our offerings in our hand as we prepare to bless the Lord in our giving. And we say personally, happy birthday to Sister Williams on today. And we pray that the Lord continue to keep you and strengthen you. Amen. Amen. And give you the joy. Amen. That you deserve for the rest of your life. Amen. We thank God for all of you today. Amen. And we're going to ask you all to remember. Amen. Uh, Sister uh, Gallup in her travels. Okay, she's going to help a dear friend who lost a family member. 
Amen. Pray for her that the Lord will give her safe passage over the highways. Pray for a brother, amen, Anthony today. Thank God for Ella Jefferson filling in for him, but he's going to, amen, aid a friend who, amen, and to uh, fill in for him at his church. And yeah, I told Pastor he, he had been asked to do so, amen, and surely, amen, somebody as faithful as uh, uh, Brother Anthony, I no way in the world I could say, no, don't go so. And every time we get an opportunity to go somewhere else, we get an opportunity to shine. Yes. Amen. Yes. To shine. Let Jesus shine through us. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So we bless that he will have, amen, a wonderful day. Amen. And that the Lord will use him mightily. Pray for all of our people that are out today for various and sundry reasons. Amen. Pray that wherever they are, that we cover them. Amen. Amen. And we cover them. Amen. So that, amen, the enemy can't take advantage of them. Amen. While they are not with us. Amen. We cover them in the name of gracious God. We come in your name. We bless you and we praise you. We magnify you. We give you glory because all the glory belong to you. Now, God, as we come to give our gifts unto thee, God, we don't come with pride, amen, and with, amen, some sense of accomplishment that we give. We come with thanksgiving, hallelujah, that you have blessed us with such as you have, hallelujah. God, don't have everything we want, but all we need, your hand has provided. Now, God, we come to say thank you. We come to say thank you, hallelujah. God, we thank you for what you have done. God, we thank you for what you're doing right now. God, and we thank you because eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard and neither has it been revealed to the hearts of men what you have prepared for them that love you. God, we ask you now to bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let us come. Let us come. Let us come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, I thank you.
say good morning and praise the Lord to everybody. Amen. We thank God for those of you that have joined us in the sanctuary today for your time, for your offerings, and for your sacrifice of your time. Amen. To be in the house of worship today. We thank God for those of you that are joining these services. Amen. And progress live through our Facebook streaming. Amen. And those of you that will catch these services later on this evening on our YouTube channel. Again, we say to you, good morning and praise the Lord. It is a blessing. It is a privilege. It is an honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To be in the Lord's house on the Lord's day. Amen. Before we introduce our speaker this morning, we would just like to take a little time for those of you that are not in this sanctuary and have missed our announcements that we do have a revival, a revival coming up in the month of April. In the month of April, we will have our spring revival and it leads into our Easter Sunday worship service and we are so glad to have with us during this revival. Minister Lamone Hart shall be our evangelist of the week. Amen. And he shall be here on Wednesday night through Friday night. Amen. Those dates are April the 5th through the 7th. Minister Lamone Hodge from the Eastern Star Church in Raleigh, North Carolina, shall be our evangelist for the week, our spring revival leading up to Easter Sunday morning. And those of you that are in the area that are, amen, close here to Littleton, we ask you to join us during this spring revival and for our Easter Sunday morning worship services. Amen. God will bless you real good. Hallelujah. And I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Now the time has come for the word of God. And we're so grateful and so blessed to have with us our very own minister, Amen. Wayne Nicholson. Amen. Who has been here with us all his life. Amen. Basically, he was born here. Not in the church, amen, but he was born, amen, a child of refuge, amen. The Lord has called him and anointed him to preach the gospel. And it's great privilege that I sit and listen to, amen, him. I love to preach, amen, I love to preach, but you know what else, amen, I love to hear the word of God. Because we all are held accountable for what we hear, what we hear, what we read, amen, what we study, is good, amen, but God holds us accountable for what, for how can we hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? So sit, amen, tight this morning, amen, and enjoy the word of God coming from Minister Wayne Nicholson. Let us receive him with a hearty amen. amen. Once again, amen. amen. Minister Wayne Nicholson. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Praise the Lord to everybody this morning. We say good morning to everybody that's here in the congregation. For those that have joined us via the social media, in Jesus' name, Facebook, and the one that will be joining us later on in Jesus' name. We just thank God for another day that he have allowed us to see in Jesus' name. Another chance and another opportunity is what I like to say, that he has given us this chance, this opportunity to be here in Jesus' name. If it, was, if it was not for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? We can say with assurance, we will not be standing here in Jesus' name, but because he loved us so much, and I'm so glad he did. As I think back and I just, just I try to remember songs because I'm not a singer, so I got to remember the words in Jesus' name. And so I'm not a singer, you don't want to hear me sing, but. But you know what, if it weren't for the Lord that was on my side, I wouldn't be standing here right now. Amen. I won't be standing right here if it, if it had not been for his grace and his mercy. As I look back over my life and the songs that as I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I've been blessed. I don't, I don't even know how, how much that I've been blessed until I get into the word of God and I look out and I see not that I judge myself by somebody else, but I look at my fellow uh, time zone, I guess I can say, my fellow 
peers. My peers, I guess that's the word I'm looking for. My peers, and I see how God has kept me and the things that he has done and the things that I have done, the things he allowed and the things that I allowed, the things he wanted me to do that I didn't want to do that because he wanted me to do it. That, that, the things that he wanted me to do that I didn't want to do. And, and you know what? He was so gracious. He was so kind. He was so merciful. He said, I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. And I look back and I just I evaluate myself from time to time. Some things, some people, some places, something, whatever, I won't wait for. <laughs> I won't wait for it. I'm quickly to no, you had enough time. I'm so glad God didn't do me like that. I'm so glad he didn't do me like that. He didn't. And that's what helps me. That's what helps me to that. You know what? It's, it's good when you, when, 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 when you say something out of your mouth. <laughs> you say something out of your mouth and you, that's why the Bible said be slow to speak. Slow to speak. Because, you know, guys, I, I always taught my son the soft answer turns away wrath. And sometimes I forget that scripture. I'm talking about me now, not you. You don't do it. On Facebook, I'm talking about me. Sometimes I forget that scripture, and I don't apply it right. And sometimes things come out that shouldn't come out. But I thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that he was patient with me. Amen. He still is patient with me because I have a long way to go. But as one of our great men of God that stood here in this position right here, he said, you know what, I got all my life to wait on. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I'm so thankful. I had good examples. That's why I'm so thankful, because I look around and, I, and, and not that I took, what I, what, what I, what I took good advantage of the, the example that was shown to me, but for somehow or another, they wouldn't let me go, and God wouldn't let me go. Because here's the thing, I let some people go. But they will let me go. Amen. And God, he ought to told you, Lo, I be with you always. So we know he's not going anywhere. So if anything, you know what? How many of us ever have ever seen God? To be sure, one or two. Facebook, you can send a little message in to say if you've seen God. And we'll read it later on. Okay. But how many have ever seen God? We've never seen him. We've never seen him. But you know what? The one that we see every day or every week, whatever you want to call it, and one we see often, those are the ones that we kind of have to write, not look up to, but when we don't know the way, fall said, follow me as I follow Christ. Because I'm a firm believer, if you follow God's people the right way, they gonna eventually say, you know what, you've been following for a long time. Now God said it's time to to not break away, but you gotta look up some. Mm -hmm. You have to look up, cause that's where your real help comes from. That's where your real help comes from. And I'm learning each and every day, each and every day. And I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's sometimes up, sometimes down. The songs that sometimes level to the ground. But one thing about the God that I serve, he's a good God. We serve a God. And he's a mighty good God. He opened doors I can't see. He gave me the victory. We serve a God. He's a mighty, mighty, mighty good God. And we praise him. We give him glory. We give him honor and praise. He truly is King of kings and Lord of lords. We give honor to our pastor, district of Fred Martin, Jr. In Jesus' name, to all the mothers in the absence, to the Lady Martin, and to all the men and women of God that is in this place and those that are watching, we give you all the honor and respect that is due unto you in Jesus' name. So as we prepare to go into the word of God, it's amazing. God is so amazing. Man, I, sometimes I, I talk and turn late at night, when the wee hours of the morning looking for something to say, and I said, Lord, you got to tell me what to say. Tell me what. And sometimes he don't, like this just this now, he just, Confirm what he wanted me to say, whether anybody else, I, whether anybody else, and I pray that you do get something out of what I'm 
about to say in Jesus' name, but if God get the glory out of what I do, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good because I know I did what he told me to do. He did what he took. He did, and I sometimes I toss and I turn. Sometimes at night, to praying a word in Jesus' name, and I said, "Lord, give me something to say." And sometimes He don't confirm until I get right into the pulpit, and I said, "Man, hell, Lord, that's too late now. Now I ain't had time to get my notes together, write it down." But God would tell you. I, I, I like this. I I tried to tell the truth because you know, at one time, you know, I used to lie. <laughs> But I try to tell the truth now, because the Bible says there's no, there's no liar going to enter into his life. You can't even get there. So I try to tell the truth now. I try to tell the truth. The truth going to do what? Make you free. I'm trying to be free. I'm trying to be free. And sometimes God don't give me something until I get right here and, and I wonder, why, Lord, why you wait so long to give it to me? Because I, now I got to go off what what you had given me already, and in it, or something that I read, and if you're not, then I think about, you know what? He said, that's what I want you to do. You, if you put it together, then you did it. Yeah, right. But I want them to know that I did it. I want them, because he you know what? He already got the hearts of the people. God already has the heart of his people already. He already if, if I get up and say, God is good, God, people gonna say, you know what, boy, that guy preached today. Because he is, that's the truth. God is good. And then you get to think about how good God be. Right. Then you look at you, then you look and say, you know what? Man, I didn't know how I would make it last week. And then who I am Sunday, thinking about what I'm gonna do tomorrow. God has been good. God has been good. And I'm I'm so I'm just so appreciative because the word he gave me is just and 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 this morning. I only have two scriptures to read, and they're coming from, you can find them, they're coming from um, Romans chapter 10. Very familiar uh, passage of scripture. Romans chapter 10, verse 17, and then we're going to read James chapter 1, verse 22. Very familiar, but when I was reading and studying the word of God and asking the Lord to use me for a word that, for, that would be good for his people this morning in Jesus' name, that that would help them along the way in Jesus' name. And then it just, it just, it just came to me as I was studying that, you know, some people don't know some of the things that I know, people at my, my age, not that I know a whole lot. And when I say the things that I know, I'm talking about the things about how God works. Not something that, that you know, that, I, that somebody told me, if you do this, this would happen, or do that, but you know, you've seen the, the effect, you've seen the benefits, and you've seen the outcome, you've seen the way things turned out when you when it did it, didn't look good at the beginning, but as you go through your life, you say, you know what? God did just what he said he's gonna do. He did just what he said he's gonna do. And you know when you know when God make a promise to you, when God, you better hold on to the promise that God in his word now. When God make a promise to you in his word, hold on to that word that he gave you Amen. through his word. Because when you do, you will see he will do just what he said. When he said that this is to you and your children, right. man, our parents had to say, our parents had to say, you know what? Lord, you said this was for me and for my children. They said, I ain't going to give up on that. I'm not going to give up on that. Now, I, let's, let's, let's read the scripture so we can have, have that already all in the way Amen. that we can trip over it and, and pick ourselves back up on it and fall down and get back up again and do all those good things that God may be pleased. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Very familiar, very familiar, very familiar. And it reads, so by faith, so then by faith, so then faith come. So then faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Let me read it again, because I like to read it so you can understand it. Facebook may be saying he can't read. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. James chapter 2, chapter 1, verse 22. It reads, 
give you just a moment to flip over there if you haven't found it. And of course, you're in the sanctuary, you can read it through the monitor. But it says, James chapter 1, verse 22 reads, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Deceiving your own selves. Oh. My topic this morning, kind of stemming from last week's topic, we're talking this morning about application. 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 Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We honor you this morning. We say you are our Lord. You are our peace. You are our king. You are everything. You are the one and only true living God. And your word said, besides you, there is none other. So we thank you right now. We ask you as we prepare to bring a word to your people right now. We ask you to use us for your glory. Use us for your glory that you may be pleased. And we'll praise you. We'll lift you up. And we'll tell the world that you are everything. You're everything to me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Application. Application. As we look into the word of God, and as we said earlier, then as some people... Some people and, and I, not that I'm boasting a brain, but I'm just I'm just thankful that God allowed me to be where I am. I'm so thankful that God allowed me to be born to the family that I was born into. I'm so thankful that God allowed me to be positioned in a place that 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 He saw many many years before. I ever thought about doing it. I, he, that's how wonderful he is. That's why he said, I know your thoughts and I know them are far off. He said, I know your early rising and I know your down set. He know our comings and our goings in Jesus. Now, he know everything. That's, I'm so glad that he know because we were going by what we know, see, and hear. We would we would cut some things short. Like I told you earlier, we'll cut some things short because nah, you ain't ready, she ain't ready, they ain't ready, nobody's ready right now. All these different types of things. But because God is so wonderful and kind, he know how to position you in the right place. There's nothing like being in the right position, the right place in Jesus' name. Uh, you, you know me, and I got to drop a sports analysis in here. In the sports world, there's nothing like landing with the right team. Man, you can have, you can be a talented person, but if you get on the wrong team, you get on the wrong team, it could, it could use your talent, you, you could lose your talent, so to speak, because you don't have, you don't have the position. That's why you don't have the, the, the playing time. Your name ain't called as much because somebody that's on the team may be just as talented as you are, and you can't use the talent that you have. That's why now in the sports world they have what they call a transfer supporter. And I think sometimes the church tried to use the transfer porter. If they don't let me do it here, I transfer over there. Well, we so glad that ain't like God. That ain't like God. In the sports world, we want to use our talent. The coach don't call my name, so I'm going to transfer from this university to that university. Because I know if I go in, here's the thing. Here's the thing. When they transfer from this university over to that university, I notice they never transfer to a university of equal or higher abilities. What I mean about that is, if I'm already at Duke, I'm, I'm already about at the top of the shelf as far as basketball goes. Can't go too much higher than that. What I got to do, I got to, in order to get some playing time, they say, well, man, if he came from Duke, he had to be all right because he played at Duke. So now he can transfer down to mid-level, so to speak. And they said, man, we got ourselves a player here because he come from that university right there. Not necessarily the case. Not necessarily the case. But one thing about the God that we serve, he not to position you. If you would just stay in position, stay in position. We're talking about application now. We're going to put some things together. Hopefully we'll do it in a timely fashion. But when you talk about application, some things have to be applied in the right way. You got to add a little bit here. You know how, what I like to say, a little bit here and a 
little bit there, here a little, there a little, and watch God work. Watch God work. Don't, I, over the years I learned, don't try to be like somebody else, or don't try to do this, don't try to do that, but you know what? But when I read into the word of God, it's Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. In the world that we live in, man, we follow everything the world do. We follow everything. If they change that clothing style, guess what we gonna do? I know y'all church over there, nah, I'm not gonna do that. No, I'm telling you, we do it. We do it. The reason why I know we do it, when the, the, many have said when we had masks, when we had COVID, uh -huh. and we put our mask on, the right kind of mask to put on, they said was what, the V95? Those are the ones that really prevent you from catching, you know, it's more of a protecting agent than all the rest of them. No, not Wayne. I got to go get the one. If I got on a black suit, I got to have on this black mask. That can match my suit. If I had on a gold, somebody got to make me a gold mask. I got to have the pearls on it. I don't worry about the protection. I'm talking about how I look. But you said, no, nah, I don't copy the world. But you know what? If you copy what God's people is doing, I remember just when I was growing up, my brother used to copy Bishop Martin. Man, he built that back porch and he go at it. He go at it. You would think, man, is it, man, is this Bishop Martin uh, protege coming up? <laughs> but he'd get on if I have witness. I have my mother and she's a witness, so I got a witness. He'd be on that backboard and he'd go at it. He'd go and edit. Boy, he just going and copying it. Just about, he couldn't say the words that Bishop Mark was saying, but you hear him out there hacking and he's doing all these different types of things. That man, he know something. My grandmother used to let the window up next door. Used to let the, she told us, she let the window up right now. I didn't mean to call it that. But he's out there and he's going on. He's going on. My grandma would raise the window up to hear what, to hear what he said. And she would say, hey, that boy out there just hacking. He just hacking, hacking, hacking. Don't understand nothing he's saying. But Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So I believe. I believe in all my heart. That's why I start off saying, when God make a promise to you, hold on to it. Apply. Apply that promise to your life. Application. Read it. Read it over and over and memorize that. When God promised you that, you apply that to your daily walk. You apply that to your daily walk. And when God says something, he means just what he said. He means every word that he said. I'm learning. When he said, I mean it. I'm not saying that. No idle words come out of my mouth. Here's the thing. Give you another example of just, just on a local level, just on... Bishop Martin used to say something, and you say, well, he's just saying something. We had a meeting, a business meeting. Bishop Martin said, Wayne, I want you to come to the meeting. I want you to be on the board of trustees. I said, okay. He said, Junior going to get with you. Junior never got with me. I didn't come to that meeting. When I came to church Sunday, Bishop Martin just approached me. And he didn't approach me. He approached me like, man, Charles Lee Nicholson did. Yeah. And that really was the only man I feared a whole lot. That, that, just in case you didn't know, Faithful, that was my father, my biological father. Bishop Martin approached me in a way, and when he approached me, he said, I thought I told you to come to the meeting. I said, yeah, but uh, uh, Elder Martin Jr. didn't never get with me to tell me to come. He said, but what did I tell you? I said, Yes, sir. Not long after that, one of the members came to me and said, let me tell you something. Bishop Martin don't let too many idle words come out of his mouth. Now, he's not God, but I'm telling you, he don't let too many. If he says something, then you almost, you can take it to the bank. Then that's why when Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, when Paul told them that, Paul, let me tell you something. I don't play when it comes to this. This ain't no joke right here. When it comes to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I got to make sure I make the right applications. I got to make sure that I follow it to a T. I have to dot every I and I have to cross every T. You know what I mean? Well, you, you, you going to make a mistake? Yes, I am. But thanks be to God who always given me the victory. He said, I know they see the mistake, but I see what you can be. Amen.
It does not yet appear what you shall be. But I know that when he shall come, I, I believe, I hold on that I'm going to be just like him. So I got to have the right application. I got to apply it the right way. I just cannot be, it said, I'm, I'm trying, I want to get to my text. But over, we talked last, uh, the word of God came last week, uh, talked about um, assets, right? Assets. Uh, that means I got the ability to come in. Mm -hmm. I got the ability to be partaker. Mm -hmm. I got the ability to, to do like the rest of them do. Mm -hmm. I can come in, you know, I can do like the rest of them. I got the ability to go. You only can go to the White House if you get the, pri the proper uh, papers or the accessibility to come in. You just don't think, I think I'll go to the White House. Mm -hmm. Don't work like that. It has to be planned. It has to be planned. You have to be on the boats for that particular day. That, now, you can't say, well, I'm going Friday. I might show up Saturday. You miss your chance. You miss your chance. Assess, assets, to be able to get in. We go in. Now, we can get in. Now that we have accessibility, Christ came, he died, he rose the third day that we may have life, that we may have it more abundantly. He was telling his disciples, it's expedient that I go. The Lord, why you got to go? It's expedient that I go. Lord, we, Lord, I want to go with you. No, it's expedient that I go. But if I don't go, I, the comforter won't come back. That's what you're going to need. That's how you're going to have the accessibility to be able to do the thing that I need for you to do here on the earth. That's how you gonna have that. That's how you gonna have that. So we have Christ came, he died, he rose the third day that we may have life. Now, he came to his own, the Bible says, right? Mm -hmm. His own received him not. Amen. But then he said, but to as many as received me, mm -hmm. to them, well, they had the power. So that means, yeah, you in here now. You in here. If you got the Holy Ghost, you in here. Yes. You in the house. You in the Facebook, uh, YouTube later on, if you have the Holy Spirit down on the inside, then you got to have that because he said, if you have not the Spirit of Christ, you are none of his. So that's what he said in his word, application. So if you got his Spirit down on the inside of you, you in the house. Mm -hmm. You in the house. In the Old Testament days, in the Old Testament days when Moses did his thing, he went and led the people out of Egypt, and they came up to the Red Sea. They all had to depend on Moses to do what Moses had to do. Because God said, I speak to Moses. Come on. That's my man. I talked to Moses. Even the people knew he talked to Moses. Because when they messed up, they didn't just say, I can go to the Lord for myself. Even when they got bold enough to do it. Even when they got bold enough to do it, Marion and Aaron, they got bold enough to do it. God, what are you doing? Can I get your attention? I talked to Moses. What are you doing? They said, do God only talk to Moses only? You saw what happened. Moses, they, they turned leprosy, jumped all over them. The world wonder why now things happen. Why do these things happen to me? The people of God even their offspring wonder why these things happen to me. Why these things happen to me? That, 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 why, you you talking about getting the Old Testament days. God don't work like that no more. His words that I'm the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. I have applications. I have order. I have ways of doing things. I have people in place. Paul himself was an apostle. And you, you believe in Paul, Paul teaching, and most of us believe in the teaching of Paul, right? Because it's in the Bible. Paul, Paul, Paul wrote most of the New Testament. When Paul got the Holy Ghost, you know what he had to do? They, uh, the, the voice that he heard from heaven told him, uh, what are you doing, Paul? You can't kick against the prick. He said, you know what? Okay, you're going the right way. Keep going the way you go. There's a man down there going to tell you what you ought to do. God still has order. 
we don't understand sometimes God's order. We don't know how to apply God's order sometimes. We think we can run to the front of the crowd every time. Here I am, Lord, because he said you can now come boldly to the throne of grace. Yes, you can. You have all accessibility if you have his spirit down on the inside. But we find it in our world and our society now, people is trying to go to God without the proper accessibility. They think they can just run to God any kind of way and think it's going to be all right. But in my growing up, in my learning, you just don't, even though he said, come as you are, in my growing up, in my learning, you got to have some type of contrition. You got to have some kind of humbleness in you. Because when you approach the throne of God, you're not just approaching the White House. You're not just approaching, uh, I'm going in mom and daddy's bedroom, and I know I don't supposed to be going in there. Man, you going, when you approach the throne of God, you approaching something that you, that life itself. Amen. You approaching the king of kings. You approaching the creator of the entire world. Universe. Come on. Everything that you don't see, that is, stuff exists that we don't see. Every once in a while, we'll go out and we'll see something. What kind of animal is that? Never seen that kind of animal before. Stuff happens all over the world. He said, what is this going on? We've never seen nothing like that before. God is in control of all of that. He's in control of all of that. He know about every bit of that. He made that. We go to what we call out of space. No, God is in all space. He in all space. He everywhere. He know everything. He's an omnipresent God. Hallelujah. Everywhere at all times. He don't sleep. He don't slumber. He don't forget. He always remember. He see you. He know your evil. Yes. Oh, he know your good. Yes. He know all of it. You know what? He said, I even, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be so good to them. They're going to do some bad. I'm still going to be good to them. Yes. Yes. He said, no, my God, don't, I'm telling you right now, I do some bad. And God's still good to me. Hallelujah. And I don't do it sometimes. You know, here's the thing. If I'm going to be honest, if I'm going to be honest, since I started with honesty, I'm going to keep on going with it. That's why Paul told them, wait a minute, you started with Christ, now you're going to go to something else? Yeah. No, so if I started with honesty, sometimes I do something, the Spirit will speak to me and say, don't do that, Wayne. Don't do that. It will speak to me and say, don't do that. Don't say that. Don't act like that. You know what I do? I proceed. I proceed, and I get myself in a world of trouble. And here's the thing. I don't get in trouble by you, 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 and you, and you. The God that I serve. I want my sleep to be sweet. My sleep does not be sweet when I do something against his will. Application. I'm talking about application. Let me get, I'm, I want to get to my, let me, I hope I can get to my point. Lord, use me for your glory. Application. When one practically applies the word of God, this means that person will go to the Bible mm -hmm. and locate a scripture or scriptures pertaining to the situation they are going through. Right. Okay. Yes. Application. Mm -hmm. Most of the time we think application is, oh, I'm going to get me a job. You got a job to do. And it's called kingdom work. Hallelujah. Fill your application out today. Yes. And the way you fill it out is with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. It's already been sealed, signed, and it's already been delivered. You just need to accept it. Yes. You just need to accept it. It's already been signed, sealed. Who sang that song? Signed, sealed, delivered? I'm yours. Whoever sang it. It's already been signed, sealed, and he said, because I went up, now the comforter must come back. My problem, our problem is, uh, we, we, sometimes we don't want to accept what God has for us, because inacceptability is accountability. <laughs> you know what, it's, 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 hard to, it's hard to preach a message when, 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 you, when you're hurting yourself. 
It's hard. It's, 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 I see why the preacher. I struggle with this right here because you know why? Because when it's hard to preach a message when you're talking about yourself. Come on. Man, I can talk about you like a dog, they say. But when it comes to me, it's hard to preach a message. But you know what? It's got to go on. It's got to go on, God. If I don't tell the God that, uh, uh, Elijah, you're not the only one I got. Somebody else, I got some more out there. And every one of us here have experienced it. When you don't say what God tells you to say, he'll tell somebody else. Yes, he will. Verbatim, what I told you to say, Wayne. I would tell somebody to say what I told you to say. If you don't do it, I got somebody to do it. So, Lord, I want to be used by your glory. I want to be used by your glory. Romans chapter 10, very familiar, very familiar. We know all this. Right. So faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. The time that we're living in now, three Sundays ago, the last two times I stood in this position bringing the word here, we talked about how we had two different groups of people that had to enter into a particular place, right? When they were coming across to Jericho, God had them, had Joshua to go and tell them, get you 12 out, go into the midst of the, of, of the river there, and I'm a part of the river. We know all about that. They were going over. They had to go into the promised land. A set of people that didn't know nothing about the Red Sea is only what they heard about the Red Sea. Faith come by hearing. That's why we got to tell somebody what God has done. We have to tell them what God has done because faith come by here. Because see, the world that we live in today, the time we live in today, they don't believe God is real. I'm, this is the, the truth. The world don't believe that Jesus Christ is real. They will tell you he's just a regular man. They will tell you, wait a minute, what kind of God will forsake his own son? Remember when Jesus said, uh, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? They said, what kind of, what kind of father going to forsake his own son? He had a job to do. He had something. If he didn't do what he was supposed to do, you won't sit where you sit. You won't sit where you sit. You won't sit where you sit. He had a job to do. He knew he had to apply himself. Not my will, Father, but let your will be done. So the world don't believe that he's real. And the thing about it is before you can move in, before you can move even to even faith, so to speak, the, you got to believe that God is who he said he is. You got to believe. You got to believe that he, who he, you haven't seen him. You haven't even seen Jesus Christ who walked there. You haven't seen him, but you got to by faith believe that if he said it, it's got to be true. There's no doubt. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And God rewards faithfulness. God rewards faithfulness. That's part of your application. It is required of a steward, Bible class students to be what? Faithful. 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 You have to be faithful. You want them to be faithful. You got to be faithful in everything God said in his word. Everything he said in his word. He said, well, what he said in his word. Remember the second group that I talked to you about? They said, when over in Malachi, when they said, where have we done this against you, Lord? Evidently, along the generation of time, through the process of time, somebody forgot to share that word. Because they said, where have we offended you at, God? We haven't offended you. What have we done so bad against you? We haven't done that. He said, when you brought up your sacrifices, you went and got the lamest thing you had in your pasture, and you brought it to me and said, here you go, God, I sacrifice to you. He said, no, would you even give your governors that? Would you give your leaders of the land you in? Would you offer that to them? No, you wouldn't, but you'd bring me just any old thing. He said, wait a minute, no, that's, no, 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 that's not what I like. You have really turned your back on me. I'm just trying to make it plain. You have really turned your back on me. They said, well, Lord, where have we done that? We haven't done that. He said, well, even in your tithes and your offering. He said, you robbing me. He said, what do you mean we robbing you? We bring everything we got to you. Well, not everything because I said I had to make sure I get my hair done. I had to make sure that, Lord. You said you beautified and meet with salvation. Wait a minute. Yeah, but I said salvation, not at the hair salon. 
That's what we do. We would take from God and say, no, Lord, you want me to have this. You said it's in your good, you'll give me the good pleasure. That's true. That's true. And he will. Application. Application. Faith come by hearing. I was born at a time that I was positioned into a place that I could hear something. I could hear something. That's why I'm so thankful now. I wasn't there, but I'm so thankful now for the, 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 the place that God placed me in his kingdom. In his kingdom. You know what? We ain't got there yet, but I just believe I'm going. I believe I'm going. You know why? He said, if you have this down on the inside, if you have my spirit down on the inside of you, you can go. You can go. You can go. You, now you have all the accessibility. You can come on. You can come. He, I'm glad he placed me in the place that he placed me because I was able to hear. And the more I hear, the more I didn't know it then, but the more my faith level was going up, going up, going up. Going up. That's why I'm that's why I'm stuck at here a little, there a little. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Because I used to hear that and I'd be like, wait a minute now. I'm gonna get a little bit here and a little bit there. And a precept, I don't even know what that means, but it said in the word, a precept, and then a precept. Then I know that man, okay, well, okay, let me let me let me find something. You have to find something in the word of God and apply it to your life. It has to be applied to your life. If you don't apply it to your life, you know what it's going to get? It's going to start to get boring. It's going to start to get routine. Yes. It's going to start to be like, oh, Lord. Okay. Uh -huh. Elmar, you call it a revival. Oh, my goodness, man. That's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Man, he called it a revival. Man, we got used to just taking the whole week off, maybe an hour on Wednesday. Man, I could push my way a little bit. Pastor said, man, Wayne, you making it. You, I hear you. You could have stayed at home and listened to it on the thing. I mean, you driving all, you all with a wild and trying, nothing. Not that, no, 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 no. I think about that. Don't, sometimes I know what, I know what, uh, what was the gentleman named Jared when they were whispering in his ear, saying, too late now, Jared. Your daughter's dead. No need to keep on going on. Don't worry about it. Let Jesus go. Let him do what he got to do. Let him go. Let him go. And Jesus was softly, just softly turn to Jared and said, Jared, only believe. And he just turned around and went and doing what he's doing. So when I get all this, no, don't keep on doing this. Don't, don't, don't. You know what? It just, I just remember the word of God when he told Jared, Jared, you just believe. Uh -huh. Wayne, you just believe. You keep pushing. You keep pushing. He, he don't have to be all loud. He just said, Wayne, just keep pushing. Just keep pushing, just keep pushing, just keep pushing, just keep pushing. And then when he started to do what he do, the world will look and say, wait a minute, he's pushing. What makes him push? What makes him push? I believe with my whole heart, people are watching us. When you get home, look in the mirror. Please look in the mirror. Take a good look at yourself when you get home. You know, I'm a firm believer. Make sure you have that spiritual mirror in front of you. Look in the mirror when you get home. God has set you up to where people are watching you. What they gonna do now? What they gonna do now? God sent in new people that said, what they doing? What they doing? And they looked at what they doing? What they doing? How they do it? I'm so glad God positioned me in a place to where as a young child, that I didn't want to come. I said, man, why I got to be like this? Why I got to be in this group? Why I can't be in that group? Amen. Some of the churches that I was growing up with, they were proud to call their church name out. <laughs> I go to, they were proud to call them church names out. When I was growing up, they said, what church you go to, Wayne? I go to the church. Never know, don't know how to apply this thing because out looking at everybody else, they saying all this, all of this, all this, all God was doing was giving me a little bit right here, a little bit right there, not knowing that the whole while some of my best friends, you know what they was doing? Said, man, oh, when I got old, you know what they tell me? Man, we knew you going to be different than all of us. Hallelujah. Because, I mean, you, they were, 
people would ask me, older people would ask me my opinion. I'm like, my, I don't know about me. Me, not me. I don't know what to tell you to do. I don't know what to say to you. I don't know what to do. But I had to get into it as time went on. The Bible in the process of time. In the process of time, God knew how to make you put things into application. Faith come by hearing. We need for our younger generation. Now, some of you here already, you all did this, applying all this to your life right now. But we got to go to the next generation. We got to somehow or another get them to apply the word of God. We got to get them to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Because right now, all they can hear is this, that, and the other. And none of that works. None of that works as far as God goes. Now, it works in their society. But it is amazing how we can learn how to do things the world way. But somehow or another, we can't teach them how to do things God way. Why? Why? Ask yourself why. Faith come by hearing. We got to get them to hear. And I don't pass my time. I don't pass my time. Let me just tell you about what I want to tell you. I want to tell you about what Paul told these Romans early on in chapter 10. Because Israel rejected Christ. Our world right now is rejecting our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They don't want no parts of him. They don't want no part of him. You know why? It's too, it's, 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 it's too much giving up. You got too many rules and restrictions. God wants you to do all these things that he knows that you're going to have fun doing. He don't want you to do all them things that say you're going to have fun. You're going to enjoy yourself. Wait a minute. Go into his word. He said, I'll give you pleasures. I won't give you pleasures that will last you for, from October to the next season, but it's going to last you forevermore. You're always going to have these pleasures when you get into me. But no, we want instant gratification. We want instant gratification. God can do something in our lives, and we'll give him glory for it. No, we'll do. We'll turn around and snatch his glory. We'll snatch his glory. Oh, because I'm so faithful. That's why God had to do that for me. Wait a minute. He didn't have to do anything for you. Hallelujah. Well, because I made every, every morning worship, every Sunday school this Sunday. I got stars all the way down for the whole quarter. Got stars. Look at my boy. That made us proud every day when we used to get those stars. We made every Sunday when we was little children. We used to get the stars. We, we were proud of that. We got all those stars. But in the process of time, faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. I'm going to close it out. I'm going to just read you the same scripture I read to you in James chapter 1, verse 22. It said, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Faith come by what? Hearing. Faith come by what? Hearing. One more time. Faith come by what? Hearing. So we have to hear, right? But it said, don't be, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. You heard it, but you got to do something. You got to apply it. Application. You got to put it into word. We cannot keep saying, well, oh, I can't. Uh, it's too much. I don't think I can. But we have to apply the word of God. Like I told the Sunday school class this morning, I believe it's Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. And it says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. That's what we say. You quote it. I know you quote it. I heard you quote it. That's what you say. I can do application means I got to put this thing to work. Application begins by knowing and understanding God's word and its timely truth. But you cannot stop there. You have to do more than just know it. Because know why? The devil knows it. The devil knows it. If Adam was here and Eve was here, they said he sure does because he deceived us. He sure do know. That's what the word is saying. You cannot stop there. If you do, God's word may not change your life. As I said earlier, it may become dull, 
difficult, tedious, and tiring. Now, I know that don't affect us, but we just sang the song. I've been working for Jesus for a long time. <laughs> that don't affect us here at this local congregation. A good application focused, focuses the truth of God's word. Show the reader what to do and what to do about what is being read and motivates the reader to respond to God, to what God is teaching. Application. It makes you, when you hear a word, it makes it, I got to go see what that word, what it's talking about there. I got to see what it means right there. I remember uh, the, I heard a word says about the whole house. I said, Lord, I need to know what the whole house consists of. Is it just me and mine? But I realized when I looked into, when I saw what Rahab did, you better go out and get your family. You better go get your family because when I come through here, you better apply what I said. God wants us to apply his word to our daily walk. He wants us to apply his word to our daily walk. Once we do that, you let God do the rest of it. Amen. You let God do the rest. And if God be pleased, if God be pleased in our action, don't worry about what nobody else say, do, or is doing. Because if he is with us, he is more than the whole world against you. We thank God for you. We thank God for you listening to me. We hope you got something out of our message today. Application, application, application. You have to apply the word of God to your life. You know the only thing that makes the devil back up is the word of God. Amen. You know the only thing that, uh, that, that, that would make your circumstances be a whole lot more bearable? Only the word of God. When somebody had told you that they can do something, you know they have the ability to do it. You said, man, I know they said it. If right now, if, if, if the richest man in this world comes and says, I'm going to make sure your house paid for it. You believe he's going to do it, right? You believe he's going to do it. If God, if God said in his word, I'm going to make you the head and not the tail, hold on to that. But while you're holding on to that, start doing something working towards the head. Don't sit right here back and tell him, I'm going to sit right here to God do something, but apply the word of God to your life. And watch God be God and every man a liar. We thank God for each of you. We thank God for your attention. We're going to turn it over to our pastor. He'll have the last word and the benediction in Jesus' name. Application. Amen. Application. Amen. Faith coming by hearing. And hearing by hearing. And faith without works is dead. Now, is dead faith faith? If it's dead, it was faith until it died. Somebody need their faith resurrected mm -hmm. this morning. Yeah. I can hear him saying, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. Amen. Faith does not apply.
never heard Pastor Bacon before. I heard him last time I preached him. 